In this video, we're going to look at making a interesting base uh, for the forest dragon. Scruffy Crow. That is some nerdy shit right there, buddy. I like that. Okay, so I've drawn around roughly the, the footprint of the dragon when he's on there. So I know roughly where he stands. I mean, I could just... Uh, Stick him down, put some sand on there, and it'd look fine. But what I actually want to do is I want to raise him up a little bit. So at the moment he kind of sits with his tail quite close to the ground. I want to sort of lift him up, maybe put him at a bit of an angle. Something about there. Uh, so to help me with that, I've got these cork mats from IKEA. Only a couple of quid. Uh, and they'll be the majority of the building we're going to do. Okay, so I've uh, roughly shaped the first layer of cork to match the template on the base. And I'm just going to use a big glob of super glue. Pop that down there. Okay, so I've built up that first shape. So we're getting there. I'm going to do another layer though. Uh, so I'm kind of going to go over about that. And here's my little human thug for scale. Okay, so that's two layers of the cork layered up. And that's the sort of height that I want. Uh, but I also want it to be at a little bit of an angle. So I am gonna, I don't think I'm gonna add more height. I'm actually gonna take away uh, a little bit of the back here. Uh, I might add a little bit more height at the front. So I'm just gonna keep working on this form until it is how I want it. Okay, so that has been shaped a little bit. And so I've got kind of the angles that I want. The tree stump in the middle there is going to cover most of this hole here. Uh, but some parts down here I'm going to need to add a bit more. So I'm literally just going to dab some glue in some of these holes and use the bits that I pulled off that I've been breaking away to make the shape. Jab them into the gaps. It's one of the best things about working with cork. You can always just sort of join bits back together like this and when you've done it it'll look like one piece again so I'm just going to keep working this whole thing until it looks like one piece of unified hillside um, and then we'll look at getting the dragon stuck on okay so I'm really ha reasonably happy with this for now uh, I'm going to look at the model itself so it comes with uh, a sort of ridge of these sort of rocks on the outside here because the way we're going to build this up I don't think we're going to need these. Um, I'm kind of debating how to take them off. Uh, I might use a saw, but I'm just going to see. See, I've actually just snapped straight through that halfling's little leg, which is not what we wanted to do. So I'm going to go and get my saw uh, before I continue any more of this. Okay, so I removed all of the, the edge bits from around the outsides. So yeah, I've used the cork to uh, blend the tree trunk that he stood on, the model parts, with the base. Now I'm going to take some of this Milliput White and I'm going to try and copy through some of the details off the tree trunk where I think it's appropriate uh, onto the earth to try and uh, blend this even in even further. While I'm waiting for some of the super glue in the base to dry, I've just been uh, cutting up this bit of twig and I've uh, cut these parts off. Uh, this is just some dried heather twigs. I'll be using these a little bit, I think, during this. And if you want to see where I got them from, uh, that's covered in this video. Okay, so what I'm doing with the twigs, so I'm uh, picking these sort of root-like ones. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the end. I'm going to just jam this end into the cork so you can't see where the end is. And there we go. I'm gonna go around and add these ones as well. I'm gonna try and follow the general line of the uh, of the tree trunk down and through. All right, I've got my milli put, and I have basically wedged it all the way around where the resin joins the cork. And I'm gonna go in now and just try and uh, continue what the what Alex was doing with the uh, original base, but trying to extend that back out. I know it seems a bit mad that I cut all this off and now I'm rebuilding it, but 
that's how I roll. Uh, so we're gonna have this branch sort of coming around here. That's gonna be smooth, I'm gonna do that as earth. So that's gonna follow on from there, kind of, I think. And then I'm gonna do this bit like bark, coming up to try and mirror that. Make that all part of itself. Do a couple of layers there, like that. Smooth this down so it looks like the tree trunk, but then like have it go into the earth here maybe. And then we can put some uh, more cork on there maybe. Similar idea over here. And then yeah, have this train off and then I'll put sand up here so you lose where the uh, join is. Okay, so now I've put the melee put on and then built up with the cork. I'm actually gonna be quite liberal with uh, some PVA. And in some places this is going to add depth as well as the uh, sort of earth texture, which is my sort of go-to. It's going to help in a few places as well, just to bring the uh, bring all the textures together. On all the tree and the rocks and the dragon, it's all going to meld into one beautiful hole when I get all this earth on there. Right, again, there, my little spready stick into all those nooks and crannies. I've also added these uh, branches sort of sticking up here and there. Once again, these are from my uh, foraging video. Uh, that one, uh, and they're just dried, uh, old dead heather. Now because this is still basically a liquid, in certain places like here, it is actually going to start to to move around of its own accord. But that's kind of, I'm, I'm all right with that because we're trying to emulate something natural here. And in real life, if you know this, the earth would cover the exposed rock. It probably will, and um, we'll get some grass and foliage and everything up here as well uh, so it'll hopefully it'll look fairly natural when it's all done actually I must admit I'm not a massive fan of the white glue on the white putty though that's a little bit confusing we've got a little flat piece here so anywhere where it's flat I actually build this in on purpose just so we've got another little area there and I'll use that to put in some little tufts some little rabbit hole here I might even see what I can do about a little rabbit for that. Now, if I was doing this at the height of summer, I'd have a lot less time to mess around with all this because this glue would already be starting to dry in some of the thinner areas. Uh, but A, I'm using quite a thick layer of glue, and B, it is uh, February and I'm in a garage. So this is going to have hours of working time. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with the way the glue's turned out. I can always add more in a bit or even remove sand away after it, we've started to dry. Um, but for now, I'm happy with this. So now it's time for the sand. For most of my models, I use this uh, bird sand um, because I like the fact it's got a few different sizes and shapes. Got little bits of shell in there as well. Uh, gives it a nice variation. So that's what I use for most of my models. And I also bought it in uh, an enormous sack load. But as this project's uh, in theory gonna be a little bit special, I'm gonna use something different. Uh, this is beach sand that I picked up when I was on holiday and it is a beautiful array of all different shapes and sizes and as I was pushing my toes through it on holiday I thought wow this is the good on some models uh, but I didn't take the piss I didn't want the Cyprus government coming after me uh, so I only have a fairly limited amount of this stuff more than enough for this project though uh, and I'm just gonna tip this on Now this is a bit of an experiment as well because I've actually never worked with this sand so far. I've been saving it for something special. So I'm going to tip this on now initially and then I'm going to, I'm going to probably going to leave that 10 minutes or so for it to all sort of amalgamate through. Okay, this has been a little while now. So we're going to shake off this excess and see how things are looking under here. Oh, somewhat like a beach. I'm going to start by cleaning out this outer rim because obviously we know that's a place we don't want the sand to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around all the places uh, that I want exposed that currently aren't. I'm going to go and individually wipe the sand away uh, so we've got exactly the look that we want for the for the whole base uh, and go really down in, in millimetre by millimetre across the whole base making sure everything's exactly where we want it. Uh, and we might even come back and do a second layer of this sand. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Waste not want, not eh? 
Okay, so I've gone around every inch of this base now, every little nook and cranny, and I've checked anything that I want to check, and I think I'm pretty happy with the uh, the base as a whole. That it all looks natural and and like earth and sticks and and uh, and ground. So, so we're probably going to leave that about here. And I'll be looking at painting this guy up to uh, painting competition standard, and that'll be in my next video, which will be a few weeks away yet. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.